So thanks for joining everyone. Today's conversation is about the resurgence of UK R&B. Um, we're chatting all things R&B to be at barriers to access into the scene, uh, really discussing the differences or the disparity between the success of US based R&B artists versus UK R&B artists, uh, what platforms and opportunities exist and what we can do as a music industry to kind of help support and um, amplify the scene. So I'm really excited about today's chat actually because I have some great people um, that are going to be on this panel today. Um, some real heavyweights in their own field and genres and I think they're going to add just some really important perspectives to the conversation. So uh, we have DJ Ace who some of you guys might know from BBC One Extra and your television and your TV. Uh, we have Carlin, who is an artist manager, manages producers, and also has a record label vibe out, uh, putting out some incredible music and really kind of set in pace for the quality of UK R&B. Uh, and then we have Joelle, who is uh, currently at Spotify, and again, is helping to lead the charge in regards to platforms and, and playlisting for artists and opportunities there. Um, I will let everyone introduce themselves and give us a little bit of a kind of background and history as to, you know, their time in music. So we'll start with DJ Ace. Hi. Um, thanks for having me, man. Really excited to be part of this conversation. Uh, my name is Ace. I've uh, been a broadcaster at Radio One Extra for a long time. I won't say how long. It will give away my age, but I, I'm a while. Um, I I launched um, a specialist R&B show on One Extra. I've been doing daytime radio for yonks, but I launched a, a specialist R&B show on One Extra um, maybe like three or four years ago now called Everything R&B. Um, Alongside that, I launched a, um, my own brand called The Record Box, which is a hub for everything R&B. We did a live music events for UK R UK based R&B artists. Um, we also did some consultancy. We we put out um, our first EP two years ago with Ricardo Williams. Uh, we curated some festivals, some R&B festivals as well. And uh, currently my Everything R&B show is on a Sunday night on One Extra. And um, I play loads of R&B artists from the UK, but also from the US. Actually, all four corners of the planet, everybody from Jasmine Sullivan to um, Jack James to Maytar to Ari Lennox, everyone. So um, yeah, that's me actually at the moment. That's it, thank you. Amazing, I just muted myself just in case there's feedback from me. Uh, and then we will go over to Carlin. Please introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Carlin. Um, I'm Ooh. Scottish, as you can hear. Um, so I guess my music career started in Scotland, um, trying to make R&B, which was not an easy challenge, not easy task, sorry. Um, so I moved away from Scotland um, about 10 years ago and I started to work my way up inside the industry. Um, I got a job at CA, Creative Artists Agency, as an assistant there, um, working on touring and um, that whole side of things, which was cool, but I was very creative and musical, so I felt like I needed to, to be in a bit more. So I then got a job at Sony TV as executive assistant to Guy Moot, um, and I was his um, assistant for three years, um, amazing mentor, and he knew that I wanted to, to do a bit more than the assistant stuff, so he promoted me into um, e &R. Um, within a and &R, I signed um, Steph London, Mr Easy, Kojo Funds, um, done multiple JVs with Disturbing London, Selection, um, worked on Stellar Songs and then also worked on Guy's roster internationally which was like an incredible roster to work on um, and then I was there for like six years and I kind of got a bit fed up of the the corporate world in the nicest way um, and decided that I wanted to fully invest my time and energy into the UK R&B scene because at the time I felt like the, the corporates weren't really signing R&B or paying attention to it as much so um, there was a pool of talent there which included Jay Warner and Jack James and Scripps Riley who I worked with at 
Sony TV, um, and then uh, yeah, I left there to to fully focus on management. And I've got a management company now, and I represent um, Scripps Riley, Jack James, uh, a new artist called K One, songwriter called Joe Reeves, um, and a few more artists that I'm just developing. So it's fully dedicated to R and B artist development uh, and management. So. That's me. And this is why you're here and why I love you. And then, Joelle, last, last but not least, uh, please just give yourself an intro. Hey, everyone. I'm Joelle. Um, I'm from London, and I guess I started um, at the BBC as well. I um, started in BBC Introducing in Manchester, finding new talent. Um, at the time, BBC Introducing was a very indie rock platform, especially within Manchester. So part of the work I did was approaching artists and getting them to upload to the tour and promoting them by that. So we got to work with really cool artists like JP Cooper, IMDDB, and stuff like that. And then I went on to work at Cobalt, um, which was a, at the time a publishing company and a distribution company. So I worked on a and on both sides. So um, I also got to work with Mr. Easy on that, but um, got to sign and work with really cool R&B artists like Tiana Major Nine, Jazz Karius, Rebecca Garten, and some hip hop stuff as well. Um, and then after that, went back to the BBC for a bit to work on the rap show um, and to Spyro's Gram show. And then after that came to Spotify, um, which is the work I do now. So I'm an editor at Spotify within the UK music team um, and look after um, the Caribbean as well. And yeah, work on R&B. So all the R&B playlists you see from a UK perspective would come under my, my work. And that's me. And we thank you. Um, so as you guys can see, we've just got a really good broad spectrum of people across the industry that can really advise and kind of impart their knowledge from you know various different areas and actually have also personally been doing great work to really push and drive R&B, which is why this conversation in this panel is so important. So um, I'm going to kick off with uh, our first question, our first topic, which is really kind of just discussing this UK versus a US R&B discussion point. Um, so the first question, uh, Ace, I actually might ask you, just be, being on radio and kind of having all of this music come through uh, on playlists or submission from artists, etc. knowing the origins of uh, R&B, which most people would say uh, came from Black America in the 40s, uh, would you say that uh, R&B is still uh, a Black music genre or no? Oh yeah, definitely, 100%. I would definitely still say it as a, a Black music genre. Um, yeah, um, um, I didn't, now at first when, when I read the, I'm only hearing the question back now, I, I, I get what you mean, but um, I, I do think like it, the origins of R&B are still very much there. Um, the, the genre is still very much thriving. And I think like, we'll, we'll get to it today, but I feel like, yes, it's a quite a new genre. I do feel like people are having to find the R&B that they need. It's not necessarily like given to you on a plate. It's not necessarily gonna be on the A-list, but I feel like what you need and what you like is there. I think people are having to actually go out and find uh, their particular types of R&B, but I do definitely think that it's still a black music genre. Okay, and then I'm gonna segue into my next question. I'm gonna ask you first, but I actually wanna get everyone else's perspective as well. How would you describe R&B within the UK at present? Like what is its status or, you know, how is the scene from your perspective? unrepresented if i'm honest um i think it's i think the artists are there and i think we have the quality i think we have some really great artists i'm listening to music that is mind-blowing each and every week um and i'm just like why don't people know about this stuff um it's again it's just not it's not being pushed in the way that it should um i feel like i have probably the only national r b radio show at the moment Mm -hmm. And there should be more. My R&B show is on a Sunday night at 10 o'clock, whereas I just feel like there needs to be more representation where there just there ha there isn't there's so many parts of the infrastructure that's missing. Um, okay. Yes, I need, a radio show is great, but there needs to be loads of radio shows and there needs to be loads of different people in place to plug the holes. Um, but I, I think unrepresented is the, the, the biggest word. It's just not represented properly. Uh, Carlin, I'm going to ask that question to you. So how would you describe um, uh, UK R&B at, at present? Um, growing. Um, I, f I feel like it's a genre that 
sorry my dog um a genre that has come through um like very you know like the underdogs have came through very slowly um and I think that it's a growing um army of artists now mm-hmm. um and and yeah and I think it's it's definitely still in the earliest stages um but I do feel very excited about it and I do think that once more of those artists come through and do get the representation like Ace is saying, it will really flourish. So hopefully next time I'll say flourishing. <laughs> and then uh, Joelle, from, from your perspective and kind of from the, the corner of the uh, industry that you kind of sit within, how would you describe uh, it? Um, I'd agree with what everyone else has said on the panel. Um, and my ad would be global. Um, I think, um, yeah, British R&B is very global and I think it has a, a global appeal um, and it has fans all, all over the world. Um, and I think part um, of our work moving forward is to to really get, I guess, the industry and the artists to, to understand that and kind of group their audience together, have that global audience, but in that one place, if that makes sense. Um, and yeah, doing work to kind of grow that as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, so actually you've kind of led me uh, quite nicely onto the next point because you're saying that UK R&B is global. Um, I pulled some stats uh, directly from Spotify. Uh, I pulled them from Spotify because Spotify is probably the only um, uh, distribution platform at the moment that has like transparency on data. So anyone can pull this information. It's literally just right there if you click on the artist about section. So Chris Brown uh, currently has 712 thousand monthly listeners from London. Uh, Jeanne Aiko has 213,000 uh, Spotify listeners from London. Her has 328,000. Uh, Khalid has 764,000. Doja Cat has 823,000 uh, monthly listeners just in London alone. And now let's look at you, some UK artists. I literally just pulled three. Um, Manelia has 28,000 uh, Spotify listeners that are based in London. Kelly Claire has 7.2 thousand. Um, Odile has 35,000. Uh, uh, Mahalia has a large number, uh, 210,000 uh, monthly listeners that are based in London. But as you can see, the numbers at the moment, even though I would say uh, Mahalia's are uh, amazing, still don't compare to uh, what the UK, what the US artists are pulling in uh, from streams from London alone. So the point from, from my perspective is that the listenership is there. If you can have almost a million people streaming from London, Doja Cat, that we can't really argue that there aren't, uh, there isn't the audience. It really, the, the next point is how do we reach them? Because these people are listening and the data is there. Um, so I'm really just trying to figure out, you know, what do we think the, the, the barriers uh, are that exist for, for people really finding and appreciating those artists? I might actually throw that straight back to you, Joel, just because I pulled yeah. the state of Spotify. Yes, I, I agree. I think obviously you've seen that like, the difference is mad, but the, the Mahalia point is actually a really good one. And I'd like to chuck in LMA into that. Yeah, as, that I can tell you a number, 172,000. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> From um, London. And I think when we look at the, the difference in those artists, it is like, I guess, the, the label backing and the, the, the amount of spend that's being spent on them. Um, when we look at those, I want to say though, those, the numbers you pulled out from those emerging artists, so Adil, Manilia, uh, Cali Claire, that's mm. also amazing considering um, the difference in spend and also that they're emerging. So someone mm-hmm. like Chris Brown, who's been around for like 10 years plus, yeah. Um, for uh, I think going back to when I started at Spotify, which has only been like a year and a half, I imagine RB artists weren't even getting those numbers at all. Um, okay. they were struggling to reach like 50k monthly listeners. Um, so it is actually growing, but I do agree, like, the difference is mad, and I think it's also getting the UK from a UK perspective, in terms of a UK audience perspective, to see that there is an audience there for it and mm-hmm. being able to put that same money they put into to their British Doja Cat marketing spend into 
a, a, a UK um, signing. So we've seen time and time again when it comes with like LMA or whether it be an artist that does well in the States first. I think that's when, from an industry perspective, not from a from not from a Spotify perspective, um, that they kind of jump on and spend etc. Mahalia is a, an amazing story because she's actually been signed for a very long time, signed since she was thirteen. Mm -hmm. But it was the Colors video that yeah. um, was actually the launch pad. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's realizing the talent that we do have and accelerating it rather than waiting for another territory or another platform to. Mm -hmm. Um, Colin, just, I guess, based on the, the numbers that I called out, just from a management slash label perspective, like what, what would your, your view be on that? Given that, you know, I, I guess, you know, you might say that from your experience, it's been a struggle to get, you know, the backing that you need, but actually the data tells you that there is a real big audience that is invested in R&B. If we could kind of get our artists in front of them and also we could take a share of those streams. Yeah, I think just kind of tapping into what Joel said there, I think all of the American artists that you mentioned, um, yeah, all of them actually are marketed more in a way um, and put into more uh, wider listening playlists that is more of a pop um, type marketing strategy behind them. I think that they definitely have the grassroots from the R&B side of things, but I do think like, your Doja Cats, your Khalids, all of those guys, you'll find them in Hot Hits playlists and, you know, all of these kind of things as well. And I think the way that they're marketed as well is more like they're marketed as a pop star um, fully rather than them just being genre-fied. Um, and I think that if we as the UK can progress a bit more forward with that and say, well, you know, like, someone like Jack is an absolute pop star. Like if you see him on stage, the music that he makes, the, the dancing, the everything, it's like, you should be marketing him like he's a pop star. And I think sometimes what we do do over here is bracket everybody into a genre and say, oh, you need to go that way to get it. And I think it's about amplifying that audience. And the way that you do that is you target or an audience that you wouldn't specifically target for that genre. And I think that's probably how, how we could help it grow. Mm -hmm. uh, Ace, do you have any kind of comments? Uh, no, I, I would just echo um, what everyone's just said. I think it is just the machine. Like having those machines behind you is, um, it, it just, it means everything to those eyes in terms of extremes. But I also would like, just like to add is, I just think as well that, um, some of the some of the machines need to realize that R and B in the UK is not going to be a quick flip. It's not going to be like we're going to pick this artist and they're going to have a number one record that's going to that's going to stream loads straight away. Some of it is like, look, we have to really invest in this artist and build and maybe put out a couple of EPs. It's going to be a little slow build, and they're going to build their audience and eventually they're going to start streaming huge numbers. But I I don't know if it's like again, I'm not I'm not in. The corporate side of things i don't know if they feel like it needs to be uh they need to promote artists that instantly are going to have those millions of streams or have those chris brown numbers that's not going to happen they need mm -hmm. to really invest and really like take time and effort into pushing and promoting these artists and really like you know what i mean it's, it's a it's a slow build i don't feel like r b is that genre they're not somebody's not somebody is not going to make an r b record tomorrow in their bedroom and it's going to be number one. That that happens with other genres. It's happened. We're watching it right now. Do you know what I'm saying? It's not, but that's not necessarily our genre. It's it's more of a slow build. It's more of a it's it's more of a time and effort thing. And and it's it's not a quick thing. So I just think the machine needs to take more care and and consideration for for the genre. Okay. So um, following on from that, Ben. Um, when I've had these conversations about UK versus US R&B, because I'm also quite invested as a fan and a listener and someone who also wants to see those artists thrive. Some of, some of the comments that I have had back is, is quite simply, the quality isn't there yet. The quality of songwriting isn't there. The quality of production isn't there. Being someone who, I mean, you sit within radio, so therefore, you know, again, you come across music from all across the globe. Um, and you are having to consider these music, uh, this, these tracks for placing, etc. Do you think there is a sonic difference, or is there a, a 
honestly a, a difference in uh, quality of output from the music that you're getting from uh, US a rs or pluggers versus some of the music from the UK. Again, I said it earlier, I just think sometimes you need to really um, search for it. But I'm I'm listening to music that's been direct sent to my inbox and I'm, I can't tell whether it's UK or US. It sounds amazing. What I will say the difference is in, for me is the presentation of it. Okay. Um, sometimes it doesn't, sometimes it's like amazing music, but you've like, the way you've given it to me is dead. Like, <laughs> it's just like, the, vi the visuals are dead, the artwork's dead. It's just like, you're not, mu it's just dead. Like how you've given it to me is dead. Or the other way around, the presentation's amazing. You got the shiny video, but the tune's dead. Like some, I don't feel like it's always, it don't always balance up. That's for me is what is lacking. It's either the music's amazing, but the presentation's poor or the presentation's amazing, but the music is just not quite cutting it. Um, that, that for me is what, sometimes we don't get right. Okay. And then, uh, Joanne, I'm going to ask you the same question, I guess, from an like yeah. editorial playlist perspective. When you listen to all these records, do you hear the difference in the US versus UK r and I'm going to be, like, 100% honest, and as I, I don't, I don't. Okay. Like, maybe five, like five years ago, when I was working at Introducing, I think there was definitely a, a, a bit of a difference. But now, no, I don't. Like, they're literally working with the same producers that her is working with that Beyonce is working with, you've got Mikey and Mo, you've got P2J, you've got Grades, like you've got like literally world-class British um, producers working with emerging R&B artists from the UK and it sounds incredible. Um, and now it's, it's in a place where from launch, they're getting ears from all over the world because of the people that they are working with. So I think maybe that could have been an uh, argument before, but I don't think it is now. I think the quality of the music coming out is so sick. Um, and yeah, with what Ace said as well, like it happens, I think in all genres, like when you're new to market, you're gonna, you might not have the best artwork or the best mix, um, but um, when you know like a good melody or a good, a good place where this could fit, like you kind of see the vision for it. And that happens stateside as well. So. And I just want to like say a massive props to to those artists as well, because these are artists that don't have the major labels behind them, don't have money um, for these these big mixes, but they're they're sounding on par with um, some of the bigger R and B artists. So yeah, that's what my take on it. Okay, uh, Kyle, I'm going to ask you a slightly different question. Um, just from your experience, I mean, you spent a lot of time in the US. Obviously, you're based here. You've got artists that are based here, again, have spent a lot of time in the US. So I think that you kind of um, have a good enough oversight as to the opportunities maybe that exist for, for that genre. Uh, do you think there are enough opportunities for, for uh, UK R&B to flourish or thrive in the UK? In the UK or in the US? Just the UK, yeah. The UK. Yeah, I, I think, well, I think it's about creating opportunities as well, like, and... Just like, you know, something that I spend a lot of my time on as a manager is just like plotting and trying to think of how can how can we create an opportunity that, that will help emphasize it. So I don't think there is as many opportunities for UK R&B artists, but I think if we can put our heads together, we can create them. And there is, you know, th there's there's things that you can do by hustling on your own because there's opportunities for music overall so I think it's maybe just more about trying to have a team around you that can help put your music at the forefront of those opportunities I think I would more say it around that way rather than specifically for for R&B because it's like you could get sent through um like something to do with like a sync opportunity or something like that for a new tv show you know, and they might say something like, oh, we're just fully focusing on UK rap or whatever it is. And I think it's like, if you can then come and present that, you know, your R&B into that space and say, look, I know this is an opportunity, it's for UK rap, but I actually think this could work really well. And I think, you know, sometimes those opportunities end up working out. So I think it's about embracing all opportunities and catering them towards whatever your artistry is. Okay. Um, I'm going to ask Joel the same question, just in regards to whether you think there's enough opportunities provided for you, Karen B. You're on mute. 
and still mute. <laughs> Can we unmute him? Can we help him or no? Nah? Okay, so in, okay, okay no, back right. on. <laughs> Sorry, it wouldn't let me unmute, my bad. Um, um, yeah, I think there definitely could be more opportunities. I think part of what I hope the, the rest of the industry is doing is creating more spaces and creating more um, places for um, emergent artists and R&B artists to thrive. Um, I guess from my perspective, we've like launched uh, a few new playlists. And one thing I'm passionate about is mixing British R&B artists with American artists because it's not like hip hop where people listen to it um, in isolation in terms of region. Um, R&B is R&B. We can listen to her and then right after listen to Tiana Major 9, so we don't need to segregate it. Um, but I do think it can be celebrated, um, like grouped together and celebrated, but it needs to be amongst um, the other greats. And part of that is also like feeding that into global systems, because as I said, it's a global audience. So making sure that people from outside the UK or a small island um, can also have access to the um, music. What I also think though, is that we r and like everyone loves r and and sometimes they don't know it. And if we look at different platforms, like Colors, like Majestic Casual, like um, that YouTube page, I think it's DNYK, like they're all r and pages. They might not explicitly say, um, but they have massive followings and they are pretty much majority r and um, platforms. So I think, I think it's, it's amazing when we go to, I guess, mainstream platforms like I guess our normal like hip hop, like GRM or Link Up, but we do know like the the that audience are there for hip hop and for um, rap music. So looking at different spaces that might not explicitly say they're there for R and B, but one that R and B music can fit into. So mm. at Spotify, we have loads of mood playlists, like um, loads of them. I've got Sweet Soul Sunday. I've got there's Spotify and Chill. Um, there's um, Days. Your hair wash day playlist. There's a wash day playlist, but um, they don't <gasps> all explicitly shout R&B. However, they're all R&B list and collectively they have like amazing listenership and a really loyal listenership. Um, so I think we also need to like think outside of the box when we, when it goes to like marketing R&B, I guess, um, and not, yeah, just using a different approach, I guess, and making sure we're, we're really casting the net really wide. Just add to that as well. Um, Please do. Um, something something that Joel said is is that yeah like being able to mix um, UK R and B artists with US R and B like and it's something that I do I think that we need to even drop the term UK R and B because mm -hmm. I just R and B artists are R and B artists yes because you're from the UK yes you're from America but it's not like there is a specific set of rules for a UK R and B genre it's not like grime which is one forty BPM which makes it grime. Do you, know, do, you know, do you know what I mean? Yeah. They're, all, they're just R&B artists that come from the UK. So yes, they should be able to get played next to Ari Lennox or her. But just, it's just R&B. It's just the fact that they're from the UK. Mm. UK R&B is not a genre, really. They're, they're just R&B artists that make R&B, but they're from yeah. the UK. UK mm. R&B itself is not a genre. If it was a genre, then Mahalia would sound like Angel or Angel would sound like Rape. They don't sound the same. They're just... Right. They're just making R and B. Do you know what I mean? So, I do feel like, and it's something I've used as well. I, we act like it's a genre, but it's not. It's just they're just R and B artists that make music R and B, but they're from the UK. UK yeah. R and B isn't technically a thing because mm -hmm. there's no set of rules that makes it UK R and B. It's not like, do you, do you know what I'm, I'm making sense? Uh, no, yeah, you are yeah. Absolutely yeah. So I think, I think we need to we... just kind of. I feel like if we if we drop that mm -hmm. and we don't look at it like Mahalia is different from her, then it's just going to help the scene progress. That's how I, that's how I see it. No, I, I, I actually completely agree with you. I think for the purpose of trying to group the artists together and have the discussion about the territory, because I don't know if I, do I say someone's a UK? I probably do. And I will stop from today. <laughs> <laughs> no, I do it. We all do it. We all do it, but I think... <laughs> Yeah, I agree with Ace, we don't need to. But um, when you go, when we travel, like it is a thing in terms of the love for it. That's what I'm saying, we should celebrate it. 
um, and not segregate it. So outside of the UK, people like love off. And I, I feel like sometimes you don't have the same energy when we're talking mm -hmm. about British r like British people are talking about British R&B. And if, I feel like if we was to have that same energy, we'd really like celebrate it. Um, but yeah, not segregate it um, from what else we're listening to. Yeah, I, I can. I actually completely agree with you guys. I think it just in regards to the, the opportunities. I think you know one of the things that we're discussing or, or discussing or, or seems to be prominent is that you know these artists are emerging or the scenes at least emerging. So therefore, we'll talk about labels not potentially giving budgets. Therefore, you know there's there's already not necessarily an even playing field when it comes to other genres, and that these aren't the artists that A and Rs are tripping over themselves to sign because they're not going viral on GRM Daily, for example. And I think in regards to platforms, if you are a rapper, you can have a, uh, you can do a freestyle Charlie Sloth, or you can go Westwood, or you can do a, um, you can do a Daily Duppy, or you can do something with Press Play. All of these platforms have got huge followings, right? But then, but then for R&B, let's not even call it UK R&B, but even just for, for R&B and your location is the UK, there just aren't that many platforms that you, if you don't have access to radio, your song's not quite ready to be on the radio and you aren't going via a distributor that's actually gonna pitch you appropriately so that you can get these playlists, there aren't that many opportunities, even if it comes to you know live and performances, for example. So definitely is something that we need to look at and address or you know hopefully that you know, we will support creators that are also kind of trying to come up with content or performance opportunities you know so if that if someone is doing wants to do a you know a, a performance platform like a colors that is based here because colors is not in the uk so you do actually have to fly out to go and do it you might not be ready for a vivo rounds etc you know you, you're not you're not eligible for a tiny desk at this stage of your career. It's like, you know, where are the online platforms that can also help to amplify and produce content for this genre? So mm. that's just the, you know, question mark there. Why are you smiling, Ace? <laughs> Sorry. Keep going. <laughs> that's my point. Yeah, no, um, I hear you. Cool. <laughs> so, all right. So let's just, let's actually talk about um, barriers to the, the audience connecting. I think we kind of all have all established that we actually think that, that you know, the, the genre is great, that we have good quality artists. You guys have all basically said that there, there actually isn't too much of a difference in regards to quality or output if you're listening to uh, R&B that originates from US artists versus UK artists. So from a quality standpoint, it seems to be equal. So, you know, what do we think is actually just uh, preventing people from finding these artists? So the, really the first question is, do we actually think the industry um, is holding back the genre? So a couple of times you guys have mentioned the machine. Um, should, so shall we maybe talk about, you know, what is happening in A&R spaces at labels, you know, in regards to what, where they are kind of at placing their attention is what is uh, creating the demand, right? So um, is the industry, are labels holding back R&B artists? I'm going to speak to Carlin first. <laughs> When you unmute, because you're definitely not unmuted. <laughs> I'm alone now. It said that I there wasn't allowed to unmute. <laughs> um, yeah, okay. So just, just from the bigger perspective of the industry and, and the buildings um, along High Street, Ken, but now also King's Cross, I guess it's all moving. Um, but something that I've found... Um, Every record label has to make money at the end of the day. Um, and a, a lot of record labels currently in the streaming market and how everything's working right now, um, they definitely are looking at data, stats, instant hits, how can they get things to grow very quickly. Um, this was one of the reasons why I left Sony TV at the time, because it was frustrating me that, can you guys hear that mean it's so loud? Is it okay? It sounds it's really, fine. It's really sunny where I am. Oh my God, it's like going to fun. <laughs> um, sorry, but yeah, one of the reasons why I left Sony TV was because I was getting so frustrated and fed up going into a and r meetings and I was having like, you know, going in with Jay Warners, Jack James, like all of these amazing producers and songwriters um, and they were getting kind of shunned away because the they wanted to sign quick 
turnaround. They know that it's going to make instant money. And at the time it was wrapped. Um, so it was always like kind of pushed to the side. And there was things that was like the music industry as a whole, where like there are some labels that do artist development and they do it very, very well. But something that a lot of labels, I think, are just getting the grip of and putting together is how to actually develop an R&B artist. Um, and a lot of them don't know what to do with it, either because there's not e rs in there that's fully dedicated and like studied the genre, um, or because the labels just see it as a, this is a long-term thing, it's going to take at least like three to four years before this artist takes, makes money for us, we're going to have to put in however much money to develop them. So, so it's a long game and most of the record labels don't really want to be in the long game because they have a business and they have uh, deadlines to meet targets, quarter one, quarter two, you know, like it's, it's all about the money. But what I have seen recently um, and, and something that actually really took me by surprise. So when I left uh, Sony TV, I ended up setting up like a JV with RCA UK. Um, and, and when I did that, I told them, look, I'm not interested in signing anything other than R&B. And I thought they were going to turn around and say to me, all right, well, piss off then, because that takes too long. But they actually said, all right, cool, do it. So I think even the fact that they gave that opportunity and now you're seeing more and more a rs that are coming into the business that actually understand R&B that want to develop it. I think now there's a new generation of executives that are actually dedicated to trying to, to trying to put it to the forefront a bit more. It's definitely still a longer game and still a growing game, like with all of the other questions and points that we're making today. Um, but I think it's getting better. I won't like completely say that it's it's awful because it's not. It's definitely getting better and and people are realizing that actually like you know music that really touches people and things like that is is also important as well as the quick hits the other side of music is really important so yeah I guess that's what I would say about the industry um do either thank you Carlin do either Ace or Joelle want to add to that because you guys I mean radio but also Joelle you've been distributor plus now streaming do you have any comments on, you know, your thoughts as to whether the industry has been holding back the genre? You're both muted. So. <laughs> there you go. Can you hear me now? There you go. What, um, well, hold on, guys. What is going on? So when you press the button, it just doesn't it was, work? It was, or... I mean, it was fine. Okay. I, I, yeah, I want to just echo um, a lot of what Carleen said. Again, it, it is a business and they are, it, it, and we said it earlier, it's, um, it is, R and B isn't a quick flip. It does take a little while to, to like push an artist and promote an artist. It's gonna take a little while, and they are looking. And again, like it's a business, so they're looking at quick numbers, and they're seeing artists do super quick numbers straight away, first single go. And also, even the art, even the R and B artists that aren't necessarily signed, they set unrealistic expectations of them as soon as they put out their first release. And if they don't do those crazy numbers, then they're shelved, they're or they're put to the side or they are, they're being forced to make music that, they necess that is not necessarily them. I spoke to an artist earlier earlier today, who is probably one of our more prevalent R&B artists that is being forced to make drill re remixes of her records because that's what's going on at the moment. Um, yeah, so I, I just think, I, don't, I just feel like there's people within the machines that either don't necessarily care about R&B, don't necessarily get it, or don't want to just put don't want to put the work into getting to the point where we're getting the streams that we want to get to. It's it's not going to be a quick thing. It takes time, and it takes a lot of effort. And I just feel like I don't want to say people are lazy. I just feel like they're under pressure to to get instant success and those instant streams and those instant sales straight away. And I don't know if they're necessarily willing to to put the work in to get it done. Thank you. Uh, Joel. Um, I want to say, oh, by the way, as well, it'll be sick to see people's faces because <laughs> I literally don't know who I'm talking to you about. All good. Um, um, yeah, I think that also speaking from people in the States, to, to people in the States as well, that they are going through the same thing when it comes to the label industry stuff. So they don't, 
also have get as many signings as they'd want when it comes to R&B and the spend they get is less than a uh, hip hop artist or or an equivalent artist. Um, and if you got to think that American spend is always higher than ours anyway, so we're we'll probably getting even lower when we do sign. I also want to say that like, I think recently, maybe last year especially, I did see more R&B artists be signed to labels than I thought would. Um, and I'm having more industry meetings about R&B artists, which never used to happen in my opinion. Right. Um, so that's like also promising. One thing I'll say on, uh, obviously I don't work on the marketing side, I just listen to the music. But um, one thing I'd say for the marketing, especially when it comes to black R&B artists, is that um, because you signed a black artist doesn't necessarily mean you have to stick to the traditional like hip hop marketing model. 100%. It's like it's a, yeah, it's it's not the same audience, even though the same audience can listen to both types of music, um, it's not the same strategy you need for a drill song than you need for an R&B song. So I think maybe they need to work out some other ways and like the best way to market that music. We see, you know, artists that are white um, making pretty much the same music, not go through those the same kind of marketing spaces and t tend to do well. And I don't necessarily think it's always because of their race, but also think it's marketing like, are we putting, are we giving these opportunities for songs to have the best opportunity to, to thrive if we're showing them to like a predominantly hip hop crowd? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I'd just say like, actually look at the different platforms there are, even if they're small platforms, let's ju all jump on it and let's really build that one platform up. GRM, Link Up, they've taken 10 years to, to be what they are today. And if that means you have to put in the work for so that 10 years time, the Instagram page R&B Brit can be big, then that maybe that's what we should be doing. Um, mm. So yeah, that's why I, I think. Perfect, thank you. Um, Carlin, again, uh, since you have uh, spent, uh, I'd like to say a lot of time in the States, um, you are, are you on the committee for the Grammys or is that Scripps? Um, yeah, well, I'm a member, yeah, so I can I can vote okay. and so can Scripps, yeah. So, um, that's a segue into me asking you, um, from your perspective, um, whether it be your own artist or artists that, you know, for example, Scripps has worked with, um, do you feel like there's a bit of a formula or, uh, I guess, fail safe ways to, to try to break an artist in, in the US? Mm, do you know what? No, I think you, you just need to be out there. I don't mm. think it's a formula as such. I think what I've seen, um, you know, especially like, well, I, I can see the stats on these two because I, I manage them, but like with Jack and with Scribs, both of them have spent a lot of time in the US and their US streaming numbers are actually really good. Mm -hmm. Jack's US streaming audience is bigger in the US than it is in the, the UK. Wow. Um, and Scribs is probably on par. Um, so I think, I think it's growing as well though, like it's not, they've definitely not broken the US, I wouldn't say that, but I think it's more about like, if you're there and you spend time there, the people in the industry do welcome you with open arms there. I, well, that's what I've found anyway. Um, and th they really do want to support what we're doing over here. Um, and you, you can see that with all of the producers that have been, you know, welcomed to to take part in the, the US R&B thing, I guess, if you want to say that, like, you know, there's, like we've said, EY, P2G, Ari, um, Jay Warner is a songwriter, Scribs, you know, like, so I wouldn't say that there's a formula. I think it's just be there. And if you can spend time there and make the contacts, slowly things will start to fall into place um, and it's about I guess having a team there as well and um, you definitely need presence and a team there and someone like repping you whether that be a label partner or whether that be a publicist or you know something you definitely need or another management team you definitely need people repping you over there because it's so big mm -hmm. um, 
but they're definitely intrigued I will say that like every time I go over to LA everyone's always intrigued about what's going on in London and the R&B vibes and you know so yeah I think looking at it as well Tiana Major was nominated for a Grammy Mahalia was nominated for a Gra- Grammy and that's artist Ella May was um, and that's artists fully from London that I guess would you say being nominated for a Grammy kind of makes you have broken America potentially like you know I mean I, I guess it's it's um like one of the accolades to the highest degree I guess yeah you know? and actually just touching on that then um I guess with the LMA journey or story many people have said you know if she'd stayed in the UK she wouldn't have been successful and that she was you know she she was at the Grammys before she was ever at the Brits or at the Mobo Awards so yeah. um I guess in her case it would be uh I guess said that she had to leave the UK to be yeah. successful. Is that a, you know, a thought that potentially is shared between you guys or? I don't think you have to leave, but I think you have to spend a lot of time there. That's mm-hmm. that's the thing. You, I don't think like Tiana's not fully left, but she spends a lot of time there. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't say you need to leave. I think Ella, Ella was in a position as well where she did start this R&B thing very early on. What was it like 2000 and 17 2018 and that was at the time where the scene was all just starting to bubble and come through again um so I think she definitely did the right thing by going over there um but I think now as long as you can travel and it's not COVID <laughs> um I think as long as you're there that's that's what will help you break break that country and I think it's the same not just the US I think it's the same for you know any country like if you want to break Germany go be in Germany if you want to break France go be in France for a bit and you know as an artist as long as you've got one or two connections it will slowly like snowball Mm -hmm. so yeah uh Ace do you have anything to add I I think Joel said it earlier as well I just feel like um R&B artists in the UK need to also think like what Colin said as well just more globally um I think as artists here you want to break here yeah that is your thing like i want to be big in the uk but the truth is like with net and streaming you could have a massive tune in the netherlands or in south africa or wherever like you shouldn't just always have that uk state of mind like just make music and see and see what happens you know what i'm saying um but i do think there is always like a um a want and a need to be the biggest in the uk whereas you could actually do some major things in the states or in japan or in australia like i think it's so much easier to get your music out there now it's not even like you need to go there with your records or cds it's not physicals like you can go and you can be a huge you can have a huge record in different territories and i just think people need to have that mentality Uh, i think um, joel said it earlier in regards to having that global mentality i think um, R- R&B artists in this country need to have that. And I think, yeah, Ella kind of had that. Yes, she went to the States and did it, but it was just not about waiting to be the biggest R&B artist in the UK. It was like, I got I got to fly, innit? Let me do what I got to do. And and she did it. Okay, thank you. I've just realised the time and we've got a cu- like quite a few questions to go through. So, um, But this is the thing, because we're all passionate and we actually all know what we're talking about in regards to r and I'm getting everyone's perspective because it's so interesting to hear. So I'm just going to quickly just move into the next segment, which was um, about r and and colorism. And Joelle, I'm actually going to come to you um, just to kind of from, from your perspective in regards to the artists that you see getting promoted, maybe some of the artists that you're having chats with. Uh, do you think that um, colorism and sexism may play a part uh, within the R&B genre at all? Um, 100% I think it does and I think to combat that I think everyone needs to know and everyone needs to have it front of mind Mm -hmm. Um, because I don't think moving forward we're what 2021 now that it should be playing a part in like the music that we listen to or the music that gets supported and I believe that if everyone has it front of mind then we can really be conscious about the decisions that we're we're making Um, so from again from a Spotify perspective, um, uh, well I guess as soon as we started and my my colleagues also were aware as well who I work with, we make sure we were programming um, dark skin artists, but also like putting them on the covers and like really amplifying them um, because yeah like it is it is it definitely is a thing. Um, 
and we have to just be aware of racism, colorism in the industry, especially when it comes to R&B arts as well, because some of um, our dark skin artists are like amazingly talented and they deserve the shine as well. So I think as long as everyone has it, like everyone's conscious of it, I think then we can actually combat it rather than it be something that is like awkward to talk about or um, something that isn't spoken about um because then it's just going to continue i agree and i think that i would say from the colorism perspective that that is more so something that is um an issue for for female artists more so than male artists um ace do you have anything to add maybe in regards to you know what you kind of feel sitting in radio i think um i think yeah it's it is an issue but I, i do think it's uh definitely a little bit more subcon. there was like maybe a time maybe like 10 15 10 years ago when there was this term uh blue-eyed soul and it was just basically about uh white people that were able to sing r&b music and it was like i knew i know 10 black girls that can sing like that how come this is the one that's being pushed in front of us um and that doesn't necessarily happen as much now but there is like there is like some conscious underlying tones of, of that still happening. Um, so yeah, I think it's it's just like what Joel just said, we need to just make sure we are conscious of it and that be be aware of what, what's being pushed to the forefront. And uh, yeah, just be, be conscious of it, I think. Thank you. Um, okay, so kind of moving on to a segment about really just enhancing the ecosystem. I feel like actually amongst all of our chats and responses, we probably would have covered some of that. Um, but from our perspectives, I just want to ask, um, you know, what work have we seen being done specifically to, to help enhance uh, the careers and the ecosystem for uh, R&B artists based in the UK? Carlin, I'm going to throw to you for that question. <laughs> Okay, we have this mute issue. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I feel like our panel should just not mute because I don't feel we've like got back. Okay, on. I won't mute again. Okay. Um, right. But wait, say it again, sorry. No, so, so, what, what, so what work, from your perspective, just, you know, from being in the industry now, all the years that you have, what work can you say has been done to enhance the ecosystem or opportunities for the genre and the artist what work has okay. been done or what work is yeah been? so i think um like especially what spotify and apple have done with the specific um playlists that was something that was obviously never there now it is and there's there's lots of support for it mm-hmm. um i think as well like i said the the labels are starting to listen a bit more and and they are aware that this next generation of a and r's um that are coming through want to support it and want to build it. So I think that's definitely been done and that's a positive. Um, there is more opportunity, I think, um, in terms of UK artists being built on um, like the R&B type festivals, such as Lovebox, um, the, the, the other one, oh my goodness, it's went out of my head, but, you know what I'm what I mean from that perspective. Um, I think that um, in terms of even like radio from Ace's perspective, like having Ace's show they are, and then you know BBC One Extra overall, like I think they're incredible at supporting uh, the the genre and the talent. Um, and I think it's about how we then amplify that to the the main stations as well. Um, I think they're definitely being recognised and looked at. I think the um, the song with um, oh my god, I went blank. How I went blank? Hamza Hamza's song was playlisted at um, Radio One, so like that's a big move as well. Um, and yeah, I think I think it's going. I think um, more more R and B producers are being signed as well, which is is great. Like from a publishing and songwriting perspective, and songwriters. Um, so yeah, I think, look, I think it's definitely, like I said, growing and it's in the early stages, but I think if we're having a conversation like five years from now, we'll be in a very different space and we'll be like, remember when there was no platforms for us to like shine or or do what we need to do. So I think that there's enough of an army from the, the, the inside as in the executives and the people in the business now. And I think 
enough of an army from the artist's perspective that I think everyone coming together and supporting will, will really, you know, just amplify the scene overall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Joelle, what additional development and support can be given to artists and artist managers, since they are the ones that are, you know, leading the charge or driving the ship? Um, how do you think that managers could be supported uh, in, in, in managing R&B artists? Um, I think just being able to get the tools needed for them. Um, again, from a Spotify perspective, we have Spotify for Artists, um, which which actually does really, really help. I'd encourage everyone to, to check it out. And that's also a way for you to actually like pitch your music directly to us. And the reason why that's really important within R&B is that a lot of R&B music is independent. So um, for... Ace said something similar where he like goes and searches for it or be something I go and search for necessarily something that's always pitched to me um, via um, whether it be labels or in other mediums it is generally through um, Spotify for artists and we've been able to see artist careers like grow and then go on to be signed or go on to do really well because of their Spotify for artists journey Um, and then I think sharing information, I think everyone just needs, like stuff like this really helps because everyone can share information and understand more about where the the culture is going. Um, And I think also supporting the emerging platforms that are trying to promote and highlight um, the artists, um, because we need them to do well in order for the artists to do well, if that makes sense. So that's like, Going, going on them, let, letting your artists do their interviews there, even though they might not have a massive following. Um, it is so important because you people don't realise the people behind these platforms are probably their full-time job is some, somewhere behind an important platform. So like, there's people that work at One Extra or Radio One um, are owning all these like small building platforms. And when they've you've done something sick for them, when they need a feature on their Radio 1 show or on One Extra, they know who to call and stuff like that. So it's just important to make sure we're supporting the grassroots, um, I guess, platforms as well. Mm-hmm. Perfect. Thank you. That was a really good, well-rounded answer. So Ace, um, my question to you is, what is the future of R&B from your perspective? What do you think the future is? You are on mute right now. So you're going to unmute. <laughs> And then you're gonna give me your answer. You still muted. There you go. Um, the future is bright. <laughs> um, I think, yeah, it, I think, again, I think the fact that we're even having this conversation means that there is a, a lust and a love for the genre. Um, like there are people that really want to push and progress and move the scene forward. And I think if all of the stars start aligning, and like we've all said, everybody starts supporting and supporting the different platforms, supporting the radio show. Like let's let's like support everybody that is helping to progress and, and, and move the scene forward. Something I would like to see more as well is the artists linking up more. I feel like as as um we've seen genres progress and blow up those genres and those scenes you see those artists linking up the producers linking up with i just feel like a little bit and i don't know if this is because i'm not an artist so i don't know you guys can tell me to me as somebody that's outside and not an artist it kind of feels like each artist is just doing their own thing and just gets on with and keeps their head down and just puts out their music i don't necessarily see the artists linking up in the same way that they do in different genres i'd love to see that more and it being seen it seen as more of a movement together Um, That is something I would like to see happen, and I think that's something that would definitely um, help progress and move the scene forward. Uh, But I feel like we're in a great space, and I feel like we are moving in the right direction. Even Again, even the fact that this conversation can happen, and so many people are invested and want to see the progression of the culture, means that we are in in a good space. Um, Without, I mean, I know there's hundreds of artists, so like you might miss people out and don't feel bad about it, but just who, you know, are you kind of like listening to or, you know, what artists are on your... You're going to get me in trouble. Um, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's hard I, so, because there's so many, but just... I, just I love so many, but I, I listen, um, like Jazz Karis, um, 
August 12th, you guys look up. August 12th has got an a album that's ready to go. That's insane. Um, Bella, um, I love Ray Black. Um, I love Mahalia, obviously. Um, Hamza, I love um, Nelia. Um, Jack James, obviously. We got Jack, <laughs> Jack James, Scribbs Riley. Um, um, Kaleem Taylor, Kadeem Tyrell. The list is endless, man. I think there's so many UK R&B artists that I love and play from week to week. And again, it's not like it, it sits nice. It's not even like it sounds out of joint when I play a Her record or an Ari Lennox record or a, a Victoria Monet record. And then I can play a Jazz Carriage record straight after. It doesn't sound weird. It doesn't sound disjointed. It just sits nicely. Like, it's amazing. And yeah, listen to my show. Sunday nights, 10 o'clock. <laughs> all of that stuff is in there and yeah keeps it i feel like it the bigger that, that like the, the the bigger that show gets the the more important and the more spot like and, and a lot i want to say i will say this as well like big up to one extra because they will take records that i'm like yo I'm, this is the one and you'll see those records slowly getting onto daytime playlist you remember i'm on a daytime i'm on daytime radio as well as having this specialist show and the the, the one extra playlist team will ask me what records are are ringing off and what records are really doing things and they, they they're starting to listen they want more r b play they want more r b on a daytime playlist so if we uh if we all start working together start pushing forward then i really believe that we're in, in a space to do big things thank you right. carlin what uh, just just really quickly i won't ask you to like name 100 artists but just two points uh, what is the future of UK of R and B, and just give us some artists that you think we should be looking out for? Okay, um, I think the future of uh, UK R and B is very promising. Um, the future of R and B is very promising. There you go. Um, I, th I think that um, the music that I'm hearing in the studios from the scene. Um, one thing it is actually just to mention is a lot of the artists do and songwriters they do all link up but they all just right. hide away from like social right. media and things like that so they all like collaborate together but they just they don't like shout about it so much i but, feel like we need to see that though i feel yeah, like it, it's right. exciting really for their fans yeah. yeah you're right you're right yeah um but yeah the the music that i've heard from um lots of, not just artists that manage but others that's come in it's like really really exciting again i feel like the music's went up a level again um, everyone's just taking their art very seriously when it comes from the music to the visuals, everything. So I think in the next year or so, there's going to be a real uh, growing sprout in it. Um, I think it is a global genre. For me, I think we will probably see a couple of our biggest um, stars from the UK emerge from that genre, 100%. I think that this uh, scene will be, you know, the next Dua Lipas, the next Sam Smiths, the next Adele's will come from this scene that we've got just now. Um, I'm putting that out to the universe. Um, and yeah, I think artists that everybody should be listening to and, and watching is um, definitely Tiana, Major Nine, if you're not already listening to her. Sure. Um, definitely Bella, I really love Bella. Um, definitely Mai too. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, James, I, I will plug, I will plug. <laughs> They're my favourite artists. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, we, we also, Sinead Hartnett as well. She's she's one of the artists that obviously, she's went out to America for a bit now as well. So love Sinead. Um, and then, yeah, there's like, you know, there's newer artists as well that you've maybe not heard of yet that are coming through. Um, I would just say like, like subscribe to all of the R&B playlists, subscribe to Ace's show, all of that, and you, you'll hear all the new stuff. And I think, yeah, I think R&B is a genre that can be loved by every ear. So that's why I do feel like it's one of the most prom promising pool pools of talent that we've got just now. Agreeing. And as, as Joelle said, it is global. It is global because the, yeah. you know, the numbers are there. It's global for the artists that are you know based out of the US. It should be global for our artists too. Um, Joelle, I'm going to ask you this, that, the same questions and then we're going to open up for um, questions. So what is the future of UK R&B? What is the future um, of R&B? Yeah. And then some artists that you are, you know, 
listening to, if you can. I think the future is live. Obviously, we've been in lockdown for for like a year and a half now. But um, we, so many projects have come out. So many projects are coming out. You've got like LMA is probably going to be releasing something. Georgia Smith just released something. Leanna Harvest hasn't toured her album either. And you've got to think how many emerging artists that we've seen, like Bella, Marie Dahlstrom, like I could literally go on, Kadeem, um, Kaleem Taylor, sorry. And I feel like when live circuit opens, it's going to be so sick to see them all live. I think they're actually going to have audiences in. And I also think they're going to be supporting each other on each other's tours especially with the numbers some of these artists and international artists are going to be bringing. So I think that's going to be a sick for the London scene to see, just to, to go out and watch RV music again. But I think it's going to be bigger than what it's ever been before, um, especially with some of our artists being like massive now. So I think that's going to be really exciting. And then artists look out for, I'd say, definitely check out the Riffs and Runs playlist on Spotify. Um, <laughs> It's a mix of R&B from pretty much all over the world. Um, and yeah, like there's so many sick artists on there. I, want, I don't want to say any names really. But I like what you've done there. <laughs> the playlists, and the playlist is a catch all because anyone who you think is great is going to be in the playlist yeah. uh, with some exceptions, I'm sure. So it's who, the, it's who the audience think is great, not who I personally think is great, who the audience. There you go. But yeah. Um, so I think that I wanted to leave like a good amount of time for questions because you guys can't catch these people for free, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if you guys have got questions, now is a perfect opportunity. You have got radio, you've got management label, you've got Joelle who's got, you know, uh, DSP, playlisting, editorial experience. So now's the right time to fire off some burning questions. Um, yeah. Cool. So I'll start with some questions that we've already had come in um, and then just keep putting them in the chat for me, guys. So Mel has said, do you feel that R&B could benefit from more support from the rap community? Shall, I mean, really, I think anyone who wants to answer should just answer it. <laughs> Um, yeah, I think that we definitely need to get better at collaborating a bit more because um, something that you saw back obviously in the early 2000s of R&B was all hip hop artists and all R&B artists collaborating together, whether that be like Ja Rule and Ashanti or um, J-Lo or be, like everybody would be on a, a rap track at some point. So I think that would be definitely cool to do a bit more of that. Um, and I think it will be happening. I think that it's definitely coming. Um, like you've saw Stormzy's already done it quite a bit um, and a few other artists. But yeah, I think if they open that up a little bit more, that would also help amplify our scene as well. Cool. So we're going to the next one. So the next one is, how do you think an up and coming R&B artist can promote themselves to engage with audiences outside of their target demographic and tap into an and tap into a wider exposure to grow? Does that make sense? To say it's open to anyone. Okay, I think, um, yeah, just look at look at where else your music can sit look at where else your music can sit i think rb has the ability to work in those different spaces um and not just the traditional ones or the ones where you look like it should be placed so i'd look at what's the tempo of the track is it a slow is it kind of like a slow jam okay cool could it go with other platforms that promote like chill music music for studying, music, music for chilling. Like, I think there's just loads of other spaces that it could potentially fit and kind of just think outside the box. I'd also say, look at literally all the emerging platforms, not just for R&B, but in general. So community radio is really important because those are the people that work at community radio or present community radio, work for national radio. And it's a good way up the ladder. So I'd definitely say that. And Spotify for artists as well. Oh, wicked. Thank you. 
Um, now, next question is, how would you suggest an artist go about getting themselves onto radio for wider exposure? Um, there's, for me, there's various different ways. Um, I, I, some, I don't, that question is difficult. I think every, every DJ um, has a different way to get their music to them. For me, I just, I like, I take one day out of my week and I just listen to all of the music in my inbox. Um, so yeah, like reach out to your, your, to various different DJs, whether it's via DM or find out where their email address is. Maybe reach out to the promote to the producer of the show. Um, get a plugger. I mean, but I always say this when people when I say when people get pluggers, like make sure you do your research and don't just give your money to anybody. <laughs> uh, make sure it's the right plugger, plugger that's like reputable um, that has. No plugger can guarantee you airplay, I will say that. But a plugger that's got good relationships with radio presenters, a plugger that's not just going to take your money because you're giving them money, a plugger that really believes in your record as well, get some um, some advice. But pluggers do, some pluggers do work. Again, they can't guarantee your record's going to get played, but they'll give you a good plugger will tell you what's what. But other than that, reach out, man. Social media is a great tool. And um, people hit me up on DMs all the time. I might not get back to everybody, but like be persistent. Um, but I would also say is this, like DJs want to be the first to play tunes. Like we have that, we're like, we're ego driven, isn't it? So, <laughs> so if if we can get the tune, the hottest tune first, we'll, we'll want it. So if your tune is banging, try and get it to the DJ that um, you think is going to play it. And if he's not, try and get some, some he or she's not, Try and get some feedback as well, but yeah, be persistent. There's, there's, there's no, there's you no, know there's no like back door to getting your music to a, to a DJ. Like you just gotta try everything, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, email, producer, plug up. Like this, there's no, there's no direct route. So I don't really know what to tell you other than just try everything. Sorry. <laughs> Can I just really quickly add something? Yeah. Just from from an independent artist perspective, this isn't about radio, but it just it, in regards to utilizing your budget the best way possible because we are talking about artists that might not have financing it's about kind of laying out the the, the money that you that you do have and thinking about where it is best to spend because for example if if you've let's say you've got a thousand pounds and the plug fee is 750 or actually a thousand pounds then you have got nothing else to to produce content with to project to potentially take some assets to see them to you know like dedicated you know, music platforms or pay, uh, pages because what you will notice is that um, a, a lot of these music focused Instagram pages it will say DM us for rates and that means that they will be they can be paid to post your music or your assets and sometimes if you're an artist that is literally working with like the hundreds of pounds for you know marketing sometimes it actually is helpful to be able to put your your content in front of uh, a on platforms that have a ready-made audience for your genre, and that might be more useful to, uh, to you at that point in time than kind of getting ahead of yourself and paying for PR when there's not quite a story or a hook which is going to generate leads anyway. Just my two pence. Okay, what's the next question? <laughs> Thank you, Whitney. Uh, I think the next one's for Ace, and I think we touched on it earlier, but it's more what are the qualities you're looking for when uh, um, artists or managers are submitting their tracks for radio? Um. I think like like it, radio like again I'm playing it for radio so you got I'm just it's just got to be a radio friendly record and when I say radio friendly it doesn't mean that it has to be like I don't know it's, I, I I'm just looking for something that's going to sound good on the radio sometimes I might get a record that I like but it just might not necessarily fit in the show it might be um, something that you might it might I don't know I just genuinely just feel like it needs to be something that is just going to fit nicely on the radio. Um, I, say, I wouldn't even say that language is an issue, but we can clean things, but we should try and make it as clean as possible and mix down properly. I know sometimes mixes that don't always sound great, but yeah, just a good quality R&B record for me is what I'm looking for. I hope Thank that helps. You. Wicked. Next question is, and I think Carlin touched on it earlier, it was a bit about who are the UK producers that was previously mentioned? Um, and those that work with US artists. Oh, we got Harlan still? 
You have, but she is muted. We can't unmute I ourselves. Say, um, yeah. PTJ, Great, Scripps Riley, um, there's Baron Wade, Mikey Moe, Hammy Samuels. There's a lot of people. Scripps, obviously. UI, Ari Pensman. Yeah. J Warner is a songwriter as well. Um, Alistair, there's loads. <laughs> and then, yeah, from the R&B perspective, yeah, there's so many. <laughs> well, wicked, thank you. Uh, next question is, how would an up and coming artist go about promoting themselves without the help of the industry standard gatekeepers? Um, I'd say Spotify for artists, I'm always gonna say that because it literally, there's no gate. Um, and for R&B, it's incredible, especially because it, it, again, it fits in so many spaces and R&B is global. So from Spotify for artists, okay, um, Tiana Blake, he's actually now signed, um, is a great example. Because before I knew anything about her, it was just by Spotify for artists. She had no listeners whatsoever. And it was able to go into like our biggest R&B playlist globally on Spotify. Um, in her in her first song, you have programs like Fresh Finds, where it's literally designed for people that haven't been on playlists before. So, and we're about to launch. I don't know if I can even say that, but I said it now. <laughs> <laughs> in, the, in the UK soon. Um, we now have a. We launched this today. So, if you go over to Spotify, we've launched a new hub called Frequency, and it's um, for Black creators and um, it's a global program and in it we have two playlists one called this is frequency and one called ripple effect ripple effect is aimed at people that have no like unsigned no like industry backing um type artists and it's a global list so it, it features american canadian african british artists putting them on a really big stage so i'm really excited about that and i yeah so i think that there's also other things like I mentioned, community radio, mu find music lovers, find music lovers that you will know, even like radio DJs who you think are on big radio platforms, they're music lovers, they check their inbox, they listen to music every week. One of my best mates is also on radio and he's always asking me, always reading his like inbox for, for new music. So I definitely like look at all the radio DJs, get their email off their Instagram accounts, um, which is normally in their bio and just literally go ham and send in your music to anyone you think's a music lover. Spill over. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thank you. Um, on the flip side, I know we've been focusing a lot more on UK going to the US, but someone's asked any advice for US artists trying to break into the UK scene. Again, open floor. Um, I mean, I think it would be a similar answer to the, the UK trying to go over there. Um, I would tell the artists to try and come and spend some time here, um, try and get in, a, in, in the circle of artists and songwriters. I think that always helps. Um, yeah, and just building, building contacts directly in the UK. I think face-to-face -face value always helps with wherever you want to go, so... I think that's probably what I would say. And if you've got a record label in the US, then tell them that you need a UK partner. <laughs> that's really, yeah, I agree with Carlin. And then just to add, again, really this, I guess the advice is pretty universal because you've got to research the market, right? So the same as what Joel's saying about like, you know, find who is passionate about R&B. Like there's no, you don't need a, like, there's no barriers to emailing someone. It's it's open. So you can email or DM someone from wherever you are in the world. So that's important. And then also, um, you know, the same way that I was saying that there's, you know, UK R&B focused platform, or there was actually, sorry, US R&B focused platforms, the same there will be also some for the UK as well. So again, if you're able to kind of find those platforms that you can seed, whether it's paid or whether it's organic, but get your music up on, that will also help you to kind of know that you're actually directly hitting a UK audience with some of your, your content too. But obviously come here if you can, that would make more sense. <laughs> cool. Uh, next question is, other than Ace, what are the other R&B DJs within the UK? 
There's a few ex. <laughs> oh, sorry, me, um, Nadia, big up to Nadia J. Um, I know that Rob Bruce plays a lot of R&B over on uh, Capital Extra. I know they've got an, uh, I think it's a Capital Extra, like, chill R&B yeah. show that's on the Davis does that one. She's really good. Big up to her. And um, that's all I've got. Yes, Manny. Manny plays R&B as well. I don't really like to big up other DJs, to be fair. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, salute, I man. I love man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's fine. No, but yeah, you have to. I mean, and again, like, I feel like it's a, it's gonna be a group effort. So anybody that is is playing R and B, we need to support and get your music to everybody that can. Everybody's got a different platform, and maybe like some DJs don't just play R and B; they might put it into their show in a bit. But that's great. It's fine. Like, let's just let's just support anybody that is is moving the the, the, the genre forward. Jam sweeping over in six Jam minutes. Jam sweeping. Um, yeah, 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 Jam. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a platform where it can get missed sometimes, and it's really good to be at Six Music's a good station, so definitely get to Jam sweeping over. And Selection, I don't know if anyone ever listens to Selection, yeah. but Selection on Apple Radio is specifically all the jams, all the vibes. So a guy called Joe K runs it and you can find it on Apple Music, but that is purely dedicated to real vibey R&B. I also want to big up No Signal as well. They are like massive champions of R&B. Um, they play a lot in their breakfast show and they have slow jams of A as well. Um, and they also, there's also No Signal playlist on Spotify and they have loads of R&B tracks in there as well. Perfect. So basically, guys, lots of people, and that's why we're saying do your research because there's lots of people you could be hitting up. And if, again, if we amplify it, all of those DJs, all of those platforms, then we will start to kind of see that 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 real ecosystem around R and B that's actually going to help to amplify the artists. Have we got more? Have we got time for more questions? Or yeah, we'll go into one more. Um... We will also be featuring some links and subscription platforms within our MMF Unite um, newsletter. So sign up um, on that and you can receive some links. And our final question is, um, I think there should be more labels that just cater to R&B music. Do you think something like this can be done in the UK? Big yeah, done. I don't know what Vibe Out is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. So, yeah, that's definitely what Vibe Out is. Um, and it's purely R&B. Um, nothing else but R&B. Oh. So, yeah. So can you all make sure that you do everything we've said today so that I don't go down the tubes in five years? <laughs> <laughs> Um, and also Ace, um, just in regards to, I guess, building music platforms, labels, etc. I think that you might have something in the pipeline. Oh, raw. <laughs> like, in the future. Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> working on something, but I also think like it would be good if there were like more R&B focused people within the machine. And I don't think there are, in my opinion. And um, I think they've got like, we're just even looking at the screen, there's so many people here that could work within the machine that could help R and B artists get to the to the level that we're talking about. So I think they I feel like the the machine needs to pull out its finger out as well and be like, okay, well, let's grab this person or let's grab this person and see if they can bring in the right artists and help us sign the right person and maybe A and R up certain projects or whatever. So I think Yes, there needs there it'll be it's great to have an R and B label, but I also think within the machine there needs to be more people within the machine that actually care about R and B. That's how that's what I think. That's what I think. But yes, I'm working on something. Does <laughs> <laughs> I mean I, I feel like I've given you know everyone's given exclusive. Joel, you've given us an exclusive today. You know. <laughs> um, okay. Are we done with questions or? Yeah. I want to say one last point actually is Please that um, history wise, I think also a lot of it is history and I feel like we really need to celebrate our successes and we have them. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to do it the most because I feel like the, I guess, mainstream media isn't doing it. We've had like incredible artists from like Sade, Billy Ocean, like Seal and like 
these are like legendary artists in the States, but they're, they're all British. And we need to really shout about the successes we do have. You think Leanne Havis had a really successful album. Jacob Collier was literally nominated for Record of the Year. And these are all like British homegrown talent. So if I feel like as a whole, as a whole community, if we could really champion those people when they do win and when we, when we like kind of remember successes we do have, it really helps us like go forward into what we're going into next. Because we know that, okay, even though it looks like it's a new thing and, it, and it's it's new and growing, we do have like really sick people that have laid down like really strong foundations. Um, and I think they deserve like all the homage as well. Yeah. 100%. Perfect. All right. So I feel like we're coming to a natural close. I want to say thank you so much to all of our panelists.